In today's video, we're going to describe the difference between an E3 and an F3 M365 license. Okay, we're going to go through the main core differences and then we'll discuss which one is most beneficial for your business. A lot of customers automatically go towards the E3 license, but you need to think, do you actually need those features? You may be able to get away with the features that you get with F3. And trust me, it's a lot cheaper. We're just going to explain the differences between the two license tiers. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll see some cost differences and then you'll see, is this feature right for me? All right, so let's get to it. So now let's have a quick look and see what the target audience is for these two different license queues. So, so as you can see here, the E3, the F3 license, is empowered for frontline workers. So what is a frontline worker? Uh, a frontline worker is essentially someone in retail, uh, someone who's in healthcare, maybe manufacturing. So they're those people who do a very specific workload, right? If you work and get a, a till, or if you input your patient details into a sort of healthcare assistant, or if you do manufacturing using one remote app or something, they're what we class as frontline workers doing that frontline job in a public domain, potentially. They would need access to kind of limited tools as well. Okay, so maybe they just have one or two applications which they use. Maybe they use a SAP system or something, or maybe they use a, I don't know, a ordering system in a cafe, or maybe they use a CADCAM manufacturing tool or something, but they won't use like a whole suite of Microsoft products, for example. They just have very, very specific functions. So they're the kind of things we reference as a frontline worker. So as I mentioned, frontline worker, Someone who uses powerful tools that deliver a connected and secure experience. They have customized applications, so maybe they'll have their inbuilt uh, live bits of application with which they work. So that's what a frontline worker is. Okay, let's now switch over to an E3 worker. Okay, an E3 worker is what we classify as a knowledge worker. A well, knowledge worker needs advanced capabilities. You're using a SharePoint, they have the office suite, and um, Teams all day. It's probably your average office worker. If you walk into any business and this uh, sat at a desk, someone who works in marketing, someone who works in finance, they're the kind of different type of workers class as a knowledge worker. Okay, so that's what the E3 um, license is, is designed for. Okay, so they're the main two differences between what we will cross as a frontline worker uh, and someone who we would class as a office worker or knowledge worker. Okay. All right. So now that we've gone through and described the differences between a frontline worker and a knowledge worker, let's see what differences between the frontline license and the enterprise license actually has. Once we've done that, we'll talk about the cost between the two as well, because this is the, the major decision factor um, that you'll have as well. All right. So I'm just going to flick over to, to my desktop screen. So as you can see, this is something called M365 Maps. It's used to look at the differences between the license tiers. So um, we're not going to go through every single feature, um, but I'm going to go through the major differences that you see uh, between the two. The first big difference we can see is the exchange online. This is the, the mailbox that the user will get when they have their account created in Entry ID. They'll get access to a mailbox. It's a difference here. So, First thing you'll see is the difference is the F3 license. You get what we call a kiosk and the E3 license, we get what we call a plan to. Okay. So kiosk license gets you very basic outlook features. Okay. But you still got a majority of the features, but you don't get every single feature. You get a two gig mailbox as well. That's a big difference. Whereas the uh, full E3 license, you get a hundred gig mailbox. So think of those frontline workers just need very, very basic mail functions. Okay. And that's what you get with this chaos mode. So that's big difference. Number one, the other difference in an E3 license, you get 1.5 terabytes of archiving where you don't get any archiving within the F3 license as well. Okay. Difference as well, you don't get any information protection for M365 using the F3 license. You can pay for add-ons if you wanted to, but by out of the box, you won't get any of those features. So if security is a major factor, F3 may be not the one for you, but if you just want basic usage for your frontline workers, then it's maybe a good solution. The other big difference is you get some of the M365 apps for the M365 M365 frontline worker role, you don't get any access to M365 apps. Whereas with the enterprise version, you get the full type of M365 applications. Think about Word, Office, that kind of thing. You get the full version with the M365. You get access to a lot of stuff like forms and lists with both. 
The other thing that we're going to get is teams. So you do get access to teams with Empress's Fried Frontline, which is good. The other major difference is OneDrive for Business. We'd get OneDrive for Business, two gigabytes worth of data with the F3 license, whereas the E3 license would get uh, one terabyte of data plus Plan 2. So you get a lot more uh, options about OneDrive for Business. But the key thing here is you get Office for the web. You do get access to Teams, PowerPoint, that kind of thing, but it's only the web-based version that you get with the F3, right? So that's the big difference. For some people, that's enough. If you ever use WA or something, you get the Outlook Client in web format, that's perfectly fine. So we can have like PowerPoint in web format as well, and that's useful. So I'll put some screenshots on the screen just so you can see what that looks like. Um, we do get access to some Power Automate stuff, so you don't get retention policies. Uh, you get a kiosk only mode. Um, rather than plan two, so you get a very basic version uh, of SharePoint in line um, with the F3 license. Um, what else do we get? Teams Live Events, we don't get that with the F3 license. They're the main differences between the two licenses. We don't get Defend of Endpoint within the F3 license. If you're really bothered about security, then maybe this is not the license for you. You probably want to pay the extra money and get the E3 license. We don't get any kind of out-of-the-box high protection. Nothing stopping you from buying that separately. Don't know what those cost differences would be. But yeah, if security is your thing, then you definitely start looking at the, uh, the E3 license as well. Well, else the difference is Office Professional Plus, you get that with E3. You don't get that with F3, but you can have the basic AWA and PowerPoint and Word Online um, features that you want to get as well. I think that's pretty much it. So preview security stuff that you, you get with both. All right, so they're the key differences that we're going to get um, between the two products. Okay, so let me just very quickly um, summarize what those differences are for you. All right, so just to recap, these are the differences that you get between the two products. So F3, Office apps, you get mobile and web only rather than full client. Email storage, you get 2 gig mailbox rather than 100 gig mailbox. OneDrive storage, you get 2 gigs instead of 1 terabyte. Teams, very limited features, but you get full cloud features within the E3 license. Basic compliance versus advanced security that you get with the E3. Automation, limited E3, you get access to full power automate. And functionality, device management, you just get the basic Intune functionality, whereas E3, you get full endpoint and price. We're going to go through next and see what the difference is. So they're the main core differences between the two products. Okay, so now let's actually go and look and see what the cost difference is, because this is obviously the main reason why most people would have this conversation. Okay, so first, let's look at the cost of the F3 license, right? So the F3 license, is going to cost you £6.60 per month per user. Okay, so if you've got 10 users, that's just going to be just over £60 a month, right? Pretty reasonable, I'd say, as I mentioned for, for those frontline workers. One thing to mention as well is this is also sometimes a really good solution for Azure Virtual Desktop on Windows 3 c 5 because with AVD, for example, when you run this F3 license, you also get access to run AVD workloads. For those frontline workers who just need a basic remote app, um, this is a, a really good solution um, rather than having to pay um, the full kind of E3 license. Okay, all right, so £6.60 per month for an E3 license. Let's actually now go and see what a E3 license would cost us. Okay, so I'm just going to click over to the screen. So an E3 license is going to cost us £31 a month. Okay, so as you can see, quite a lot more expensive. I think that's what times four the cost um, of it. So, yeah. Definitely a lot more expensive. And if you think about those feature differences, the, the, the main features that I'd say is on security. Obviously, you get a lot more secure solutions with the E3 license, but uh, also the Office as well. Uh, a lot of people are, are more comfortable using the web versions. And these days, people have Mac devices or people of younger generation have been brought up using um, the sort of the web versions, which most of the time are actually as feature rich as the full client. Personally, I use the full client because I'm old and I'm kind of used to that. But I think younger generation who I see today working basically don't even think about it. They automatically just use the web version. So is it as bad as you think it is? Probably not. Um, it's around the kind of Teams um, functionality, but also the store is like, it's two gigs storage enough, probably. And um, so again, so yeah, give it some deep thought because as you see, the, the cost differences are massive. Like, six pounds versus 31 pounds 
that's a huge difference in cost so just think to yourself do you actually need the full suite uh, of features that you get with e3 most companies work with today uh, default to e3 or a or the default to even e5 licenses but i guess it depends what your priority is is security do you want to give the users access to all the features they could get if cost is a major factor the f3 license is definitely one and uh, that you should be taking a really good serious look at all right so we've looked at features we've looked at costs so let's just do a quick summary so benefits that you get with e3 obviously security you get a lot of more security that you get with f3 you get full productivity suite those customers want to use the full versions of kind of outlook and powerpoint and all the different collaboration tools that you get within those as well teams you get that as well but obviously support remote work as well okay but so does it f3 and, and this is what i mean the fact that with the um, sort of F3, you still get access to a lot of those basic suites and functionality. So let's just talk about the F3. So F3, very, very cost-effective solution for frontline workers. So for those who don't need all those day-to-day -day features that you may have with a full office worker, the F3 is a cost-effective solution. It focuses on mobility and accessibility. If you just want access to those basic things to do the minimum that you need to do um, your job. And obviously it's easy deployment uh, with minimal um, requirements as well. So look, there's no reason why you can't mix and match both. You don't have to buy an E3 or E5 licenses for every single person in your company. If you've got a subset of remote contractors who just need access to your environment, you can just build them a AVD or Windows 365 desktop whack them on with their F3 license. They get access to your environment using AVD or Windows 365, and they get access to basic functionalities like a mailbox and access to run uh, open documents using this web version uh, of Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, and log on to Teams and send messages. They may actually meet anything that they want to do as well. So definitely consider that. It's not an all or nothing. You can certainly mix and match licenses based on use case. If we think about the new Windows 365 stuff around the frontline worker functionalities, the cost per user could go down. Historically, you may have to buy or you may have just purchased maybe a E3 or E5 license. You may have published them on their own Windows 365 desktop or AVD desktop, personal desktop. But if you think about how we can now turn around purchase an F3 or an F5 license, let me just give him access to a few AVD remote apps. That cost per user just nosedived, right? And we get the same thing for the Windows 365 shared licensing as well. Rather than having to go and buy a bunch of like individual licenses, I can now buy a pool of licenses essentially. And again, the cost per user takes a nosedive. So we can easily get that cost down to, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 pounds. 20 pounds a month maybe maybe 15 maybe even 10 if they're using basic remote apps definitely a very very cost effective solution all right so that's it for today's video i hope it's been a bit of food for thought i look forward to seeing you in the next video and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button thank you goodbye